Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman, mighty visitor from another world who came to Earth when the planet Krypton was destroyed by quakes and explosions. Superman, who can twist steel in his bare hands, leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, and who walks about among human beings as champion of the weak and the oppressed, disguised as Clark Kent, news reporter. As our story opens today, we find Kent in the private office of editor Perry White. Listen. Kent, how would you like to take up the search for Captain Alonzo Cragg? Cragg? The Arctic explorer? Why, he's been missing for three years. Now, look here. Now, sit down and let me give you the whole story. Alonzo Cragg was one of the most famous Arctic explorers in the world. Yes, I guess everybody knows that. Well, three years ago, he headed an expedition up into the islands north of Ellesmere Land. You know anything about that country, Kent? No, not a thing, Chief. It's very little explored. Just a maze of islands and ice fields and cliffs. And the wildest rumors you ever heard. What kind of rumors? Well, most people don't believe them. Alonzo Cragg made up his mind he'd prove them one way or the other. But what kind of rumors? Well, rumors that the islands north of Ellesmere Land are inhabited by Indians. Or maybe Eskimos. Nobody seems to be exactly sure. But they're amazingly intelligent, as far as people can judge. Big and tall and strong. And they're white. What? Well, that's what the story is. A race of giant white men. But that isn't all, Kent. Tie your hat on good and tight and catch this. They're ruled by a single king. Some kind of a witch doctor or medicine man. And that witch doctor never dies. Oh, come on, Mr. White. Don't tell me you fall for stuff like that. Just isn't possible. No, it isn't possible. But Alonzo Craig wasn't a fool, Kent. Well, don't tell me he believed it. He went up north to investigate. Traveled thousands of miles over desolate country just three years ago this week. And what happened to him? Nobody knows. That's why we sent Ray Martin, one of our reporters up there after him. And old Professor Peters. Peters? The yeah. museum man? Oh, say, I know him well. Well, did Martin report anything? Not a word in the last month. Both Ray Martin and Professor Peters seem to have vanished in thin air, just like Alonzo Cragg did. You don't mean it. Well, that's why you're going after them, Kent. You're going to look for Peters and Martin, and if humanly possible, you're going to find out what happened to Alonzo Cragg. Set your own white. Who? Who? Why, yes, yes, certainly I know her. Send her upstairs. Tell the boy to bring her in when she gets here. Say, that's mighty queer. Almost uncanny. You'd never guess in a million years who's coming up. All right, Mr. White, who is it? Miss Paula Craig, Alonzo Craig's twin sister. His sister? What does she want? Well, that's what I'd like to know myself. She certainly can't have heard about Peters and Martin disappearing. Well, while we're waiting, what about them? What makes you think they're missing? Kent, they were supposed to keep in touch by shortwave radio with the base of Port Ormond. They did for a while. Four weeks ago, the radio went dead. Oh, well, that might not prove anything, Mr. White. On the other hand, it might prove a good deal. Because yesterday I received an important message. What was that? Our man at Port Ormond telegraphed it down. It's common gossip among the Indians at the trading post that Martin and Peters have been lost. Lost? Well, how would Indians know that? Don't ask me, Kent. Apparently they do know something, and they won't tell. Come in. Oh, hello. Hello there, Miss Craig. Hello, Mr. White. I hope I'm not bothering you. They said to come right in. Why, certainly, by all means. Oh, may I present Mr. Kent? Mr. Clark Kent, Miss Paula Craig. How do you do? How do you do? It's a funny thing you picked out today to come in, Miss Craig. Kent's on his way to Port Ormond in the north. Mr. White, something's happened, and I don't know what to make of it. Why, what is it? You remember about the rings. I, I think I told you about them. Well, you might tell Kent. Mr. Kent, Alonzo and I were twins. When we were graduated from school, my father gave us both identical rings carrying his initial and our mother's initial in a sort of seal on the back. Well, the point is, Kent, that Captain Craig always wore his and Miss Craig always wore hers. That is, she did until Ray Martin went north. Exactly, Mr. White. When you sent your searching expedition north to find my brother, I gave Mr. Martin my ring to take with him. You see, I thought... I thought it might help him identify Alonzo. I understand, Miss Craig. But you said something peculiar happened. Yes, very peculiar. This morning, I received a small package in the mail. And when I opened it... Well, look. What? 
Why, that's one of the rings. Oh, Miss Craig. Who sent you that? Mr. Kent, it came down from Port Ormond by air. My brother's old navigator, Captain Walters, wrote that he bought it from an Indian. It's my brother's ring. Why, that's amazing. Great heavens. But, but all the time. Look, I, I, uh, I never noticed it. Kent, your train leaves in 20 minutes. My train? Oh, yes, it slipped my mind. Uh, Miss Craig, I... uh, no, I'm going to be terribly rude now, but I'll make amends some other time. Well, Mr. White, I, I don't understand. Well, now, look here. Kent has only 20 minutes to catch his train. Leave uh, Captain Waller's letter in the ring here, and uh, Kent will take the ring north with him. I'll call you once I get my bearings. Oh, of course, Mr. White. I, I hope I haven't uh, upset you. Oh, fine, fine. Now, you're a real soldier, Miss Craig, a real soldier. And don't worry. I'll call you in a day or two. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Kent, and good luck. Goodbye, Miss Craig. And we'll find your brother for you. Yeah, thank heavens. Kent, we'd better work fast. I'll say so. Mr. White, I can't possibly catch a train in 20 minutes. Oh, forget it. Forget it. I have to get her out. Now, Kent, look here. Look. Look at this ring. Well, what about it? She hasn't heard about Martin and Peter's being lost. She took it for granted that this was her brother's ring, that somehow it had come back from Alonzo Craig. Well, what's the letter say? Oh, forget the letter. Walters thought the same thing, and they're both wrong. Mr. White, what do you mean? Kent, this isn't Alonzo Craig's ring. What? They're supposed to be identical, but they're not. I can tell by this scratch on the inside of the band here, see? I put that scratch there myself before Ray Martin took the ring. Great Scott. You're not saying... Kent, I am. This is the ring Paula Craig gave to Ray Martin. Now then, what's happened to Martin and Peters? And how under heaven did this ring get back to Port Ormond and into Captain Walter's hands? Telegram, Mr. White. Here, give it here. Kent, this is from Captain Walter, Syke Walters, up at Port Ormond. Yes? He was the one who took Alonzo Craig to Ellsbury Land. I told him you were coming. What's he say? Urge your man to use all speed. Time may be important. May know more when he gets here. Walters. Kent, Kent, what's going on up there? Mr. White, I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Say, maybe I can catch that train after all. Speeding through the upper air, red cape streaming in the wind, the man of steel soars over the Great Lakes, northward to Hudson Bay, and northward again to the tiny settlement of Fort Ormond. And presently... On the deck of an icebreaker, buffeting her way through the fog and ice, Clark Kent, reporter, talks with the ship's master, Captain Walters. Any idea where we are, Captain Walters? Mighty heavy fog out there. Getting up there, Mr. Kent. Any time now, we'll be hitting right into Ellesmere Land. And when we get there, we take the dog sled. Oh, plenty cold, all right. Say, uh, don't you ever use your fog horn? Not up here, up. Except now and again to tell if we're close to an iceberg. Sometimes the sound will bounce off. Icebergs around here? Oh, sure up. Mighty lucky if we don't run right into one. Uh, didn't hear no echo that time. Look here, Captain. Down at dinner, you started to tell me about Alonzo Craig. What's all the mystery about? Nobody knows, Mr. Kent. All of a sudden, he just up and lit out with only an engine sled driver. But Why? Why would he do a thing like that? Well, some of the men in his expedition said he heard about the luck of the north. So he set out to find it. The luck of the north? Yep. What's that? That's a treasure, Mr. Kent. Oh, that's what they say it is. Millions and millions of dollars, gold and precious stones. Land knows what not. What? Up here? Now, don't ask me if it's true. Don't ask me how it got here, if it is true. All I know is what they tell me. But where is it? Who owns it? Well, they say the Indians owned it. Some say it was always here, and some say it come from pirates and such a couple hundred years ago. Do you believe it yourself? Uh, Mr. Kent, I declare I don't know. I've seen some mighty queer things up here in the north. Hey, ain't it getting some colder all of a sudden? Oh, I'd say so. Going through me like a knife. Uh, well, the fog's thicker, too. Uh, say, look here, Captain. Yeah. What about these Indians you were talking about? Well, nobody knows much about them, neither, Mr. Ken. They keep to themselves, and their old witch doctor backs them up. If you ask me, Alonzo Craig went after the luck of the North, and the Indians went after Craig. All right, but what about Ray Martin and Professor Peters? Oh, and by the way, you never did tell me how, how you happened to find that ring. But... Now, listen. Uh, you hear that echo? 
That means there's a berg right close by. Yeah. Yeah. Iceberg! Iceberg, get ahead! Astern! Full speed, astern! Hey, look. Off the starboard beam. Coming through the fog. Icebergs closing in on us. Captain Walters, what'll we do? Look! Look! I see it. I ain't blind. There ain't nothing we can do. Hey, look out! See where you are now, Kent. I gotta work past you. Hold her off! Put your helm down high! He's gone. They'll never see me in the fog. Great heavens, those bergs are all around us. I think it's time Superman went to work. Up, up, out, and away. Look at those bergs. They're bigger than mountains. Thousands of tons of solid ice. They're all around the ship. If I can't do something fast, she hasn't got a chance. Down, down, right into the water. Now then... Got to shove this one out of the way. Force a passage for the boat. Good thing they can't see me in the fog. Now. No. No good. Not quick enough. The ice is closing in. It's crushing the boat. Sudden crushing danger in the Arctic ice field. Can Superman force a path for the tiny vessel... Or has he met his match in the towering ice peaks of the northern seas? Tune in next time and follow the story. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.